plans. So a 60 year old Mr. X as a farmer presented with complaints of involuntary movements of right upper limb and head for past four days. Instead of presenting illness, he was apparently normal before this back. After that, he developed sudden onset of rapid, non-rhythmic, non-repetitive, high amplitude movements of more on proximal, which was gradually increasing for past four days. On head, he had lateral movements with tongue grimacing. Uh, he was during this episode, he was responding and no history of any loss of consciousness, bubble or bladder incontinence or seizures. Uh, it was relieved during the sleep. No history of any post tictal confusions or no history of any fever. Uh, past history, uh, he had similar episodes. Uh, it was two months back. Uh, it was treated in locally. Uh, he had uncontrolled diabetes mellitus on irregular medications. No habits of any smoking or uh, ethanol consumptions. No history of any high risk behavior. On examination, uh, vitally he was stable. His pulse was 80 per minute. This was regular blood pressure of 130 per 70 and respiratory rate of 12 per minute. And he was April. And he had no pala, rectal, cyanosis, clubbing, infodemopathy, or pedal edema. On CNS examinations, uh, higher mental function was very normal. No cranial nerve abnormality. Uh, motor power was more than 4 by 5 in all four limbs. Uh, he had non-rhythmic, non-repetitive, hyperkinetic movement, uh, more on proximal with lateral movement of head and tongue grimacing. Uh, reflex RR 2 plus. Uh, except bilateral ankle was absent and plantar was bilateral flexor, no extra pyramidal signs and other system were within normal. So, a 60 year old gentleman with known case of diabetes mellitus on irregular medications presented with right upper limb with head involuntary movements as hemibalismus uh, with no any limb weakness or altern sensorium. Uh, where would you clinically localize? So I want to clinically localize in the basal ganglia areas. So the differential initially we consider was in basal ganglia, we consider cerebral vascular accidents, any infarct or hemorrhage or diabetic stereotopathy. That metabolic and infectious causes we consider very uh, rarely, but we put on last in order. Uh, metabolic causes of Wilson disease and infections, Japanese encephalitis, herpes, neurocystis cirrhosis, or toxoplasmosis. So investigations, uh, his HV was 10.9 with microsite hypochromic features and total count of uh, 10,700 with the differentials of neutrophilic predominance and platelet of 3 lakhs. His LFT was normal uh, with RFT shows urea was 54 but creatinine was 2.33 and sodium electrolytes was normal and urine routine shows uh, 1 plus protein urea with UPUC of 0.64 and iron shows uh, iron deficiency anemia with vitamin B2 was normal. And further, his GRBS was 660 with Q, where ketone was negative and HB was of 16.6. Uh, we did for two load, uh, any infarct or hemorrhage, we did for the CT brain. And CT brain, it shows uh, age related cerebral loss, no any infarct or hemorrhage. And fundus exam, it shows uh, non proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Coming back to our uh, differentials, so in Western China, there is no any infarct or hemorrhage as per the CT brain. And um, Infectious patient doesn't have any fevers and a metabolic was very, very rarely in the old days. So we probably consider because of high sugar with non -ket uh, no ketones. So we probably consider as a diabetic stereotopathy is one of the cause. So the, our final diagnosis was it is a diabetic stereotopathy with uh, microvascular complication of diabetes. So I would like to present mainly of the, about uh, diabetic stereotopathy in this question. Uh, definition what is about diabetic stereotopathy and physiology of basal ganglia with this pathogenesis and what are the investigations we require. So diabetes is a very rare complication of diabetes, mostly associated with type 2 compared to type 1. It is also known as a hyperglycemic, non-ketotic, hemichoria or hemibrialism. So it is mostly commonly seen in the Asian population with female predominance, mainly due to it is was underdiagnosed in the male. So its prevalence is 1 is to 1 lakh. So in the basal ganglia pathway, it had three components. One is input, output, and intrinsic nuclei. The input nuclei are considered was a puta, cardiac and putamin, and the substantial ganglia pass compacta. The output nucleus was mainly considered as globus pallidum internum and the thalamus. And the intrinsic nuclei was considered as uh, globus pallidum externum, subthalamic nucleus, and the substantial ganglia uh, pass reticularis. So uh, it had... Uh, in the input nuclei, receive the mainly signals from the cerebral cortex via the uh, glutaminergic pathways and the substantia nigra uh, mainly the dopaminergic pathways. After that, uh, input from uh, cerebral cortex and the substantia nigra, the putamen will give uh, two pathways. One is direct pathway and the indirect pathway. The direct pathway, which was a facilitatory movements, and the indirect pathway was the inhibitory movements. 
like example was uh, if we are flexing the arms uh, we need to flex the flexor and uh, relax the extensors so the direct pathway will give the uh, stimulus to the flexors to contract and the inhibitor pathway will inhibit the extensors to relax the muscle so the main functions of the basal ganglia was the uh, to maintain the posture uh, to facilitate the posture tone and movements in uh, relation to cognition also so if any of the uh, in basal ganglia if anything affected it will cause two one is a uh, agenetic movements will cause or either hypergenetic movements the a agenetic movements example is uh, parkinsonism due to defect in the dopaminergic pathway the hypergenetic movements are mainly due to the defect in the gabaergic pathways so it will cause the hypergenetic movements like chorea hemibalism atherosclerosis tardive dyskinesia like that so coming back, in diabetic state of the what is happening yeah, it was considered as a two path uh, two theories was one is metabolic theory and the vascular theory in metabolic theory what is happening in hyperglycemia due to defect uh, decreasing in the coenzyme complex so the glucose was uh, diverted into the anaerobic metabolisms mainly due to increase in the lactate so it will cause one is metabolic acidosis and second part so it was uh, enter into the anaerobic metab metabolism so the acetyl coenzyme which is vital for the krebs cycles for uh, energy purpose in the brain it will reduced so for that the gaba will enter into the succinyl coa pathway and it will somehow support to the brain for that uh, krebs cycles after that gaba also decreases so in last uh, so the gaba will be decreased so acetyl coa not produced so acetyl coa also not produced and the atp also produced so it will cause the dysfunction in the basal ganglia area it will cause the movements uh, disorder and second is vascular theory in vascular theory what happens due to the uncontrolled diabetes the diabetic vasculopathy will occur so that diabetic vasculopathy will cause the hypoperfusion of the basal ganglia nuclei area so it will cause the dysregulation of the basal nuclei and causing the involuntary movements another one concept was the uh, it was all published in the journal club of endocrinology this published in hyperglycemia due to the severe dehydration it will cause hyper viscosity also so that is why patient developing this uh, irregular movements but it is all are uh, uh, temporary if you correct the hyperglycemia and hydration it will resolve on its own an imaging findings also there so histopathology wise it's all due to the petechial hemorrhages so in histopathology it shows the presence of macrophage infiltrate hemorrhage with extravasion of erythrocytes focal micro hemorrhages hemosiderin deposits and hemosiderin containing macrophages in yeah, this gliosis analysis of blood vessels and many gemstones were found in biopsy performed were after 60 days later so these are all uh, performed from biopsy and the autopsy after so it is a ct scan imaging showing the uh, it is a ct brand in a it shows the hyper intensity in the left side and in b it was showing the bilateral hyper intensity in the uh, basal nucleic area uh, it is a mri t1 weighted imaging it shows also hyper intensity in this uh, this ct and mri findings are very temporary uh, if we may get a, a ct imaging ct or brain imaging or we may, we may not also get so investigation mainly blood glucose levels hb1c and ct brain waves we get, get hyper intensity in the contralateral domain and t1 weight and mri shows hyper intensity and t2 weight and mri shows hyper intensity these are all due to the hypoperfusion and the petechial hemorrhages why we are getting that hyper intensity so these petechial hemorrhages uh, will not usually cause any weakness also and we we can get in the imaging or we cannot get in the imaging it's all temporary or we can get after later uh, seven to eight days also repeating images we can also get <laughs> so come back to our patient uh, in our patient after adequate sugar control with anti psychotics his movements were come down so he uh, after that we also done mri brain it also shows chronic impacts in the left corona radiata and central mobile and diffuse age related cerebral volumes so, so this is the overall uh, summary of this patient so mainly the treatment we consider was hydration and insulin after that we can if the movement also not decrease it will take around, after sugar control also it will take around 2 to 3 days to control the movements if not control we can start with uh, antibiotics or dopaminergic depletion agents so learning points are this basal ganglia pathway and diabetic steroids pathogenesis so this is our patient at the time of admission this is on the second day on the second day after sugar controlling it's 
little bit decreased. After that, on second year, we started some olanzapine and tetrabenzene for one study.